welcome to our review on making salts too. First thing we need to understand are a few general word equations for reactions that happen between certain compounds and acids. So what we're really looking at here are different bases and their reaction with acids. Now two examples of bases are metal oxides and metal hydroxides. And the two word equations that we will see is metal oxide plus acid makes a salt and water and the metal hydroxide plus acid makes salt and water. So all we need to remember there really is whatever our base is will always react with the acid to make a salt and water. The other metal compound we need to understand the reaction of with acids are the metal carbonates. Now these ones are slightly different to our other bases in the fact that when a metal carbonate reacts with acid we make three things. We make our salt and water still but we also make carbon dioxide. And if you remember, any time we want to test to see if a gas is carbon dioxide, we'll use lime water, and lime water goes from colourless to cloudy when the carbon dioxide is present. And remember the importance of that phrase colourless as opposed to anything else. We do need to know how to work out the names of the salts we're making. So we've got four important rules we need to remember here. If it's hydrochloric acid, then the name of our salt will always end in a chloride. If it's a sulfuric acid that's reacting, we'll always make a sulfate. Nitric acid always makes a nitrate, and phosphoric acid always makes a phosphate. So make sure you learn those four acids and the names of the salts that they will make. So to get the name of our salt, quite simply, what we need to do is look at the name of our metal compound. Whatever the metal is, goes with the first part of our salt's name. Then look at the acid, and depending on what acid we've got, gives us the second part. So in this example I've given you here, we've got copper oxide plus sulfuric acid. So copper goes to make the first part of our salt's name, and sulfuric acid always makes a sulfate, so we're going to make copper sulfate. And then obviously because it's copper oxide, we also make water. I've used the colours there to try to show you where the different elements come from to make up our actual products. If we have a reaction with ammonia or ammonium carbonate, then we make these ammonium salts. Okay, so just remember that phrase ammonium, and it would still be ammonium sulfate, ammonium chloride. Just remember that ammonia or ammonium carbonate makes ammonium something. The next thing we need to do is actually write balanced symbol equations for this. So if we look at the example at the top, we've got calcium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid makes calcium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide. So the first thing we need to do is write the symbol equation. Now, while they're going to give you some chemicals in the question, they won't give you all of them. And what I've done is at the end of this little review, then I've given you the list of the ones that you need to remember. So our formula for calcium carbonate, CaCO3, plus hydrochloric acid, HCl, arrow to show that we're going to our products there, calcium chloride, CaCl2, plus water, H2O, plus carbon dioxide, CO2. One thing to go very careful of here as a way that we throw away the marks really easily is when we're putting the numbers at, after our little elements there to show there's two hydrogens, two oxygens, etc. Make sure it's in that subscript position, so to the bottom right of our letter. If you put it anywhere else, you're going to lose your marks. So go very careful with that. So the good news is that if we've actually just managed to write down the symbols in our equation correctly, then that gets us one out of our two marks. And there's a sneaky little trick here that we can learn for whether we need to do any balancing or not. If the equation that asks you to write a balanced symbol equation is worth one mark, then whenever you've written the symbols, it's already balanced. If it's worth two marks, you've got to put some numbers in to balance it. So you can remember that little trick to identify do you have to balance it or not. So the way we're going to go about balancing this then is we need to count the number of each element on each side. So the easiest way I find to do this is use the arrow as a dividing line. Then write the symbols for each of the elements on each side in the same order and then count them up. So on the left hand side we've got one calcium, one carbon, three oxygens, one hydrogen and one chlorine. And on the right hand side we've got one calcium, one carbon, three oxygens, two hydrogens and two chlorine. So we can see this isn't balanced because our hydrogens and chlorines don't match. In order to balance this, there's only certain places we can put numbers. You can't change the chemical formula. 
the only place you can put numbers for balancing are where I've put the little red lines in front of the whole chemical. So whatever number we put in front means that all of the elements within that chemical are times by the number in front. So because in this example we've got two hydrogen and two chlorine on the right, but only one hydrogen and one chlorine on the left, we've got a nice simple way to balance this one. All we need to do is put a 2 in front of our hydrochloric acid, the HCl, because that 2 there means that we've got 2 HCl, so that's 2 hydrogen and 2 chlorine. And at that point we can check and all of our elements are then the same, so we've got our balanced equation. So what we've got here in this table are the list of the different chemical formula that you need to remember for your exam. So the best thing I can suggest you do is to print them out or write them in a big poster, put them on flashcards, anything at all like that, and then just keep going over it and testing yourself until you've got them in your head. So there is no simple quick way to do this, unfortunately it is just sitting and learning them through practicing. So find a way that works for you and then make sure that you know those symbols for these different chemicals on that slide there.